Hey everyone, I am messing around with the KO2 and OPZ and just wanted to record messing around and making a little uh, loop. So let's go ahead and um, get a melody on the KO2 and then I'm going to do drums, bass, uh, and effects on the OPZ and then I'll make kind of, I'll extend this four bar loop to like a 16 bar loop by using the tape track and the performance effects. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a sound loaded up here. Um, and I've got this on keys mode with the key step sending here. The sound mode is on keys, so there's going to be a bit of polyphony, but for the most part, this is going to not be like a very polyphonic song, I guess. Um, so let's go ahead and load that up. And I have a sort of a, an idea in mind, but we'll see what happens when I actually start playing. Okay, so that was close enough for me. So I'm going to go ahead over here and I'm going to turn off the metronome and I'm going to make a very, very basic four on the floor um, pattern for the drums. So let's just go ahead there. And let's go to the hi-hat track. I know it's technically not the hi-hat track, but it's all that I use it for, so. Okay, now I'm going to change the levels a bit, increase the gain, increase the punch a bit. Let's increase the drive on the master track. Maybe add a bit of the chorus. I'm gonna increase, there we go. Then I'm going to send this to effects two, which I'm going to change to being this type of reverb. Um, can't remember the names of them, but. <laughs> and I will add in sends from the drums. Cool. So right now we've got just a very, very basic thing going on. So let's, um, this is a bit unlike me, but I will actually just keep track one as a, um, as a delay, I think. And let's have it receive from the um, IO track. Let's make it faster. Okay, that's cool enough for me. And what I'm gonna do is every fourth of these, oops, every fourth time that the snare hits, um, actually, you know what, let's make it at the end of every fourth bar. I also want that to send to the uh, delay. Okay, cool. So what I'll do now is let's add in a, a very basic bass. Um, I'm going to control the OPZ using the uh, key step through the KO2 by going here and I'm going to basically say that I want this pad to be a what I'm just going to call like a MIDI through pad. So I'm going to change it to have an output of channel one. Then I'm going to hit keys. So now all MIDI input is going just to this pad. And then that pad is sending to channel one here, which is going to the active track, which is the bass track. So let's check that we're getting sound. Okay, yeah, so that's the, that's fine. Um, I'm going to change this um, engine a bit. Uh, so let's go ahead, uh, yeah, let's start there. And I'm gonna latch that note, oops. <sighs> There we go. So that way I can just mess with this as I go through, or as, as I go along. Okay, um, let's have the LFO on the filter and have it be just kind of increasing it.
okay, I'm having a hard time just thinking, remembering even the chords that I played a second ago. So um, I guess I'll just wing it. Why not? Let's just uh, give it a try. Um, let's see. So I think I started off on, yeah, I started off on an A, but I'll just play the, the E, I think, and then I'll go down to that D. Yeah, I'll just descend. We'll see how that sounds. Oh, that sounds horrible. Let's see, what if I decrease it? This is what happens when you don't actually play along to the song. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just have this running. Uh, so. simple. Um. I'm gonna, I wanna make it a bit noisier, that's kind of my goal. So, okay, so we've got a fairly basic, uh, just I guess eight bar slash eight bar pattern basically, but I'm gonna go to the performance track and we're going to get as much of this performance track as we can, as much out of it as we can. So I'm going to try to make the drums uh, varied this whole time. Okay, so I had my MIDI routing messed up a bit um, and now we're back, so, I'm going to go to the performance track, the performance effects track, so that's track 13, and I'm going to send MIDI to it from this keyboard. Now, if you're just playing the regular performance track, this first octave affects the entire drum group, so you can do a bunch of fills. Or you can duck it. And, and this whole thing controls the synth group, where you can duck it, do fills. But if you have an external controller hooked up here, the lower octaves will function just like the actual individual tracks performance tracks. So here's what I mean. If I, I've got this set up to be 16 bars, so if I record this, then I go over to the uh, drum track. Oh, oops, I have to hit shift. And if you go back to the performance track, it's recorded all those. Let me move them a bit closer so you can hear them working. But if you have, if you go to the lower octaves, you can access those performance tracks for those individual tracks from the performance FX track itself. So here's what I mean is if I'm playing here, I've got this low enough that this is going to duck the kick. This is going to duck the snare and this is going to duck the hi-hat. So those are all F in different octaves. This also means though that this is going to play 16th notes for 30 seconds. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to record some performance effects and I'm going to go, I think, just one at a time. I will start off with just the hi-hat track. Um, so let's give this a try. I 
didn't like that last one there. Okay, so now let's move on to sequencing. Um, let's do the, the kick next. And actually, let's just start it over. What is happening? What happened to my kick? What did I do? All right, let's try this again. I think I'm experiencing some kind of glitch here, so let's restart the OPZ and see what happens. Weird. Yeah, okay. Maybe I... I wonder if I had, like, latched a note on accident or something. Anyway, so let's go ahead and, like I said, get back to that kick. So let's just do like a something simple with a snare then. Okay, so now that we have some variety in our drums at least, I, I know it's not coherent, I'm still like learning how to actually do all that. Um, but uh, I think that's close enough. So I'm going to go to the tape track now, enable MIDI there, and I'm going to make it so that the only thing going into the tape track is the IO track. And I also want to make sure that the dry level is set to zero. And the reason for that is I just, I want it to completely take over the tape track. So let's give this a try. And uh, let's make this, yeah, 16 bars as well. Let me make sure I'm in the right octave here. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, give this a try. And some effect sounds here. Oh man, it wasn't recording that, was it? Interesting. I wonder what I did. Oh, oh, I changed the page. That makes sense. Okay, let me redo the tape track here, just because I messed that up a bit. From here, if I wanted to, I could start, um, actually let me see, I haven't tested this in a second, so I'm going to set this, so that it is sending to track 9 to 11, and I want to um, see if I can record some pitch bend on this. Uh, you used to be able to do this 
before the firmware update, so I'm not sure uh, where we're at now with it. But um, yeah, let's just uh, let's give it a try and see what happens. I'm gonna have to wait until this is actually repeating. Oh, oh, but you see what happens is that this is, I forgot, this is a, um, has only has a one bar length, so I'm going to actually have to delete that pattern, and then I'm going to increase the length to 16 bars. Um, I guess I could do 32 if I wanted, but let's just keep it with uh, 16. So let's go ahead, and it seems like it was recording the pitch bend, but let's mess with it now. So um, here we go. What's metronome off? Oh, that's velocity sensitivity. Ah. Uh, 200, is that metronome? Nope. Ah, must be, here we go. Oh, I just changed the MIDI clock. Oh well, whatever. Okay, so it's about time for me to do laundry, so let's uh, let's just give this one last listen through. Okay, so let's go ahead and restart that loop. You can see the pitch bend happening. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.